you ready to learn to get rid of stress in your life? To learn how to deal with the emotional turmoil that causes strokes, heart attacks, bad health, and even weight gain? Life-changing habits for work, family, and everyone you deal with start here with Andrew Whitman. It's time to get warrior tough. Here's Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. All right, it's time to get Warrior Tough, the most monumental hour in media anywhere. We're your leadership and mental toughness coaches, Andrew Whitman, and the I'm not out of breath, Dutch Coleman. <laughs> What's happening, everyone? <laughs> All right, so like the show's about to start. I have no, I have no comms with Dutch, and I'm about to text him, and uh, he's. <laughs> He calls me and he says, I'm on my way home right now. And then he's got to run three flights of stairs to get to the studio. I said, you're going to be out of breath. He's like, no, I I worked out on the elliptical twice. I'm like, what? Twice? When? He's like, twice in the last week. I'm like, you've had it for four years. You've worked out twice in four years is what you mean. (laughs) Hey, I'm a well-oiled machine. (laughs) Yes, you are. Oh, man. (laughs) So anyway, you're ensconced in the... uh, in the in the on the throne there behind your microphone and everything's working you're not out of breath you actually like of course i don't know why i thought you would be because you'd like play pickup basketball games all the time at least in your mind (laughs) (laughs) i i call it beast mode beast mode yeah (laughs) yeah and you do you eat a lot of skittles too while you're in beast mode Uh, a lot of candy man that's all good so hey this week man my wife hit you and me up in a group text, and it was like a stack of Klondikes. Did you see that? It looked like 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 oh, the yeah. World Trade Center, the new one. You know, it's like 110 stories of Klondikes, and it was that all was different beautiful. flavors. Yeah. Oh, it was definitely beautiful. <laughs> he said, hey, "I think you texted back heaven." I said, "Dutch city." <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a brand new box in in my freezer right now. Box of 24. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so that's good to go. Hey, if you want to get in on the conversation, give us a call at 855-856-1380. That's 855-856-1380. Use the hashtag Get Warrior Tough on the Twitter. You can uh, send all your complaints about tonight's show to at the Dutch Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> send all the good stuff that you know the show's so awesome at Warrior Tough PhD. You go to the uh, website getwarriortough.com because tonight, Dutch, we're going to talk a little bit about. And I know like people take this as like a cuss word now, man, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about millennials. Oh, mm, mm, wow! <laughs> right, we're we're, we're we're Mr. Rogers in the neighborhood tonight. Yeah. So wait, let me just throw out. Let's start with the stats, right, and then we'll do story time. All right. So. <laughs> Here's the stats. Here's exactly what a millennial is according to uh, the powers that be. Now, I got uh, this is out of the Wall Street Journal. I've also looked up um, some stuff on the U.S. Chamber, um, some stuff from the uh, what's the census, U.S. Census, all that. So what they say that uh, to be in the millennials or Gen Y is what they used to call it. Uh, you're born in the 1980s to 2000, 1980s to 2000. So I got two of my kids are, are millennials. And and you're almost one because you're so young, Dutch. <laughs> this is when I claim, this is when I claim my age right here. Yeah. Early seventies, baby. Early seventies. You're a seventies child. Okay, so you and I, we are Gen Xers, whatever that means. But we were born after the baby boomer, sixties and seventies. So it's the eighties to the two thousands. There's eighty million of them. They actually make up the largest part of the workforce right now. They're actually they're, they're the largest generation. So millennials make the largest portion of the workforce. So um, it's a big deal. Okay, so we have to talk about it. I just say the elephant in the room, but and so here's some stuff about millennials. There's a lot of misinformation, disinformation. There's a lot of truths. I'm going to try and stick to the facts and let you draw your conclusions on your own truths. But this is empirical data that I'm giving you, and this is out of Wall Street Journal, and uh, also uh, Statista. Millennials rack up 18 hours of media use per day. I don't know when mm. they sleep, man, because. Like, <laughs> How many hours is that? Did you 18, say? 18. 18. Here's, yeah, a day media use per day, millennials. Interacting with media per day. Here's the hours and minutes. They browse the internet for three hours and 34 minutes on average. And this was done, this was a survey done in 2014. Three hours and 12 minutes on social networking. Two hours and 19 minutes watching live TV, but then there's also time-shifted TV of another two hours and another two hours of video games. It's an hour and 15 minutes for the movies. And then you stream music, podcasts, or listen to whatever your version of the radio is for an hour and 15 minutes. And you use email, texting apps 
for an hour and four minutes, and you actually only spend 32 minutes reading print, you know, like magazines, newspapers, and books. Mm. Oh, and there's also, a, you know, a, an hour of talking about products and brands. <laughs> Oh man! You, you know what? It's as you say those numbers, it brings into the realization dealing with the people that I deal with, the people that I know that would be considered millennials. That's it. That's exactly what they're doing. As I'm as I'm remembering conversations and recalling having conversations with them about their day. That's weird, it's strange, it's true, but that's exactly what's going on. And it's, and it's funny to hear the numbers, and we know the numbers are the numbers. They're not, they're not just grabbed out of the air, they're based on real stuff, but it's still weird when you can look at your, because they're outliers, but when you can look at your stuff and what you see and it fits perfectly with the numbers, it's still scary no matter what. Yeah, yeah, and that was, that was medium. Those are all mediums, they're not outliers. That's the medium amount of time that... Millennials, if you were born between 1980s and 2000, in this 2004 survey done by the Wall Street Journal and Statista. But you know, there's always that guy that'll say, well, that's not me because I don't do Right, it. And, and we're so glad. We don't want outlier. it to be you. Right, and we yeah. don't want it to so, be you. And listen, I'm, and you know me, Dutch. I, same thing with personalities, generational stuff. It's all about mindset with us. I don't care what generation you came from or what personality test says that you were poll you put in. It's all about mindset. And you could change your all that uh in an instant, it's a choice, and you could change your mindset and change everything. And so, yes, we are painting with a broad brush. And if you find your, if I'll say it like this: Remember the old, uh, the um, what was that Toy Story movie? Woody, the sheriff, used to say this: "If the boot fits." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, maybe he said, "There's a snake in my boot." I can't remember. There's but either way, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> but listen, if the boot does fit, you should wear it. All right. So now look. They did this survey. So here's this breaks out because they are the biggest because we're going to start talking about workplace because, you know, you could talk about millennials all day long about marketing and consumerism and the media. I just gave you the media number so people understand the mindset. But they are in the workplace. They're the largest portion of the workforce. Now, employers are terrified, according to a Gallup poll done this year, because 21 percent of millennials quit their job less than a year in and move on to another job. And another 60% are open to it. So that's 80% of people will be gone before they even put 12 months in. And you know what? Again, it's really weird when the numbers reflect what you see. You know, like, again, sometimes you, you may be in the minority, you may be an outlier, but when I look at LinkedIn... <laughs> and I'm looking at some of the, I see eight months, and yep. then I see another job, seven months, then I see another job, one year, then I see another job, six months. I mean, it's, and I'm always like, wow, okay, wow, yeah. okay, that's interesting. And to see the numbers being what they are, it fits with what I see from an anecdotal standpoint. Like when I'm just browsing stuff, I right. see the same stuff, and I, and I question it. Well, let me give you some hard numbers behind this. Okay, so here, out of all these surveyed, 91% expect to stay in their job for less than three years. 91% of all millennials do not expect to stay in any place longer than three years. Mm. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it is what it is. It's interesting. If anything is interesting, com compared to what was happening prior to this generation, that's what, see, that's what, what, when some people get offended when you bring up these numbers because uh, for some reason, they're doing it, but at the same time, they're feeling ashamed about it when it's brought up, right? Yeah, they get like, why defensive. you got to call me millennial and stuff? I mean, hey, man, right. it's, it is what it is. Right, so, so they get defensive. Right, yeah. so and here's yeah. the thing. This is what this, so 91%, they're going to stay in a job list. This is what they found out. This is the statement. Millennials are not loyal to their employers, their company. There's no job loyalty, but they are loyal to their brands. So there's brand loyalty. Right. And products. you know we ne you know we don't question that. We don't question brand loyalty, but the manifestation of it. But this is funny be. because okay, so you're loyal to whatever, insert the company here. Apple, Samsung, Android, whatever it is, whatever, you know, what is whatever brand it is. It doesn't matter what it is. 
<laughs> that's funny that you're loyal to buying the product, but these are also companies where you have to work to make the product. So you're loyal. <laughs> so you're loyal to your. Uh, I'll say it like this: You're loyal to the pleasure that you get from the product. You're loyal to your own pleasure and your own self gratification. Yet you are not loyal to the company that makes the product. If you work there. Mm. Now this is just a crazy mindset. For me. I don't get it, right? I, I really don't. But this is the numbers of the numbers. Sixty percent now, millennials. Sixty percent. This is people that are like you know. 30 years old and under have switched careers. 60% have already switched careers at least once. <laughs> Not jobs, but careers. Mm. Only 33%, only a third of all millennials say that their current job is going to be their career. Yet wow. 77% participate in loyalty reward programs, 95% want brands to court them actively, 80% want brands to entertain them, 48% say word of mouth influences their purchases more than TV ads, and 70% say they always come back to the brands they love. If they court me, if they entertain me, and if my friends like it, and I love them, <laughs> I'm loyal. But at work, 91% say we're out less than three years. 80% say they'd be gone in, in, in a year. They've either 21% do leave under a year, and the other 60% say they're open to it. Now, we're, we're going to get deeper into it, but I think, again, no one's questioning anyone's right to leave. No, no one's questioning, no one's questioning uh, your reasons for leaving per se, but it is funny that the, the statistics you just read, how they are completely opposite of what we're talking about in the workforce, because we know a lot of times people are running from stuff whenever they leave these jobs. They're, they're, they're dealing with uh, s situations and they're running from them, having never dealt with them. So what they do is they continue to run from place to place to place, right. never so dealing with the issues, which let's just we know bring what it the back. issue ends up being. Right. Let's yeah. just bring it back to remember when right after graduation, when Drew graduated and I said these, all the parents at these graduation parties were saying, it's okay, you don't know what you're doing. It's okay if you don't know what you want. It's okay. This is why these numbers are, because no one took the time to ask the question, hey, you know what, what is it that I really want out of, tell me, what do you really want out of life more than anything else? What does that look like? What do you want your life to look like? What would you know, what are you passionate about? No, no, it's okay if you don't know what to do. So, you, do, you know, it's okay. And because it's okay, then we have numbers like this where you can't even stay at a job for like seven months or eight months and you're out. And it's, it's, it's career elimination is what's going on here so it's what i don't want instead of what i do want and, you know I, yeah I, we're going to touch on some different some different reasons that this stuff is happening but you know i think you're right on it right now but there's some other things i want to throw in there as well yeah we will we're up on a break dutch when we get back we'll, we'll hit this even harder if you're a millennial you know when you're getting mad give us a call you're listening to get warrior tough radio show with dutch and andrew <laughs> 